today we're in one of the creative epicenters of Denver. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What It Do. It's nice to meet you. I was born and raised in Denver surrounding areas. And while I've done a lot of showcasing of the city of Denver when it comes to the fashion scene here, I feel like there's still a lot more to explore. And as of recently, there are some new bright spots popping up specifically in the Rhino Art District, which is exactly where we are today. We're gonna explore a bit of Rhino. I'm gonna show you a bit more of Denver's fashion scene. We got some shopping we need to do. I need to get my pants tailored. It's gonna be a fun day. I gotta eat at some point. So come hang out with your boy today. <laughs> first things first, let's go get these pants tailored. Hello, how are you? Good. I need to make a few alterations to a few different pants. So I think the waist, the waist, is, waist is a bit too big. And then sometimes there's this extra bit of fabric that bunches up kind of back here, or not bunches up, it kind of pokes out if that makes sense. I just got back from New York. This is um, like Japanese denim that I'm making a little bit of like a video on, oh. kind of my experience okay. with it. Are you an influencer? No, I am, I'm not an influencer. I'm just <laughs> your everyday, <laughs> everyday patron. Good day, <laughs> Professional outfit repeater. That's my new moniker. One of the things that I love about Denver is for the most part, people are really kind. This woman is a prime example of that. She has owned this shop for years, and if I'm not mistaken, it was passed down to her through her family. But you're probably asking, Drew, why, why are we at the tailor right now? Okay, let me explain. Like I said, I just picked up four new beautiful pairs of Japanese selvage denim, and while they fit pretty damn good, I want them to fit really damn good, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I have some extra alterations, which I'll show you guys once we get to the end of the video, after everything has been tailored and, and whatnot. I love being able to support local Denver businesses like this. This location is one of the best in the city in my opinion and the two women who work here are so nice. Thank you guys. That was that. That woman is so nice in there. That is such a nice woman. I'm excited. She said she'll get the pants back to me within a week. Let's head back over to Larimer, to Walnut, to Rhino and explore the rest of the day. For the first shop of the day, one of the best streetwear, high-end fashion spots in the city of Denver, in Steadbrook. Let's go over to Steadbrook. I took a fit pick right there one time. So Steadbrook is right across the street. Let's head in. Yo, what's happening, bro? How are you? Hey, how you doing? Hello. How you been? What's good? It's good to see how you, are you brother. How are things today? Things are great. Yeah, things good. are good. Good. How are you? It's a beautiful day today. It man. is. Oh my God. It's so nice out here. So your boy made it to Stedbrook, chopping up with the dudes a little bit. It's always fun to reconnect. Those are for real the homies. We got a little bit of shopping that we need to do. It's just us in the store right now, which is a beautiful sight. I came very early for that reason. <laughs> Let's do a bit of exploring. I gotta be the responsible one. I gotta be the, 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 the... When I set out to make this video, my plan was to be at Steadbrook for 45 minutes to an hour. I was probably there for close to two and a half hours. <laughs> Zaki is an awesome host. He showed me this new brand called Parks and Mini that I wasn't ultra familiar with, but I decided to give these shorts a go because they looked really interesting. What's the Westwood? Yeah, sure. Always good to see you guys. Good man. seeing you, bro. Always, yeah. Always good to see you, bro. Yep. Thank you, guys. 
man those dudes over at Stedbrook are always good people and honestly something that stood out this time and I don't know why it hadn't clicked before but Zachy the founder who I'll show a clip of if you don't know who he is Zachy is so knowledgeable every time I walk into Stedbrook and we have a moment to talk he always puts me on to new brands obviously it's his job it's like his profession to know what brands are coming into his store just the lens he goes to talk about the brands why he likes them what he cares about and just everybody in there everyone has a very good vibe and they always like they always make it very comfortable to kind of just be in that shop so kudos to them that was Steadbrook. next we're gonna head to a shop called recital it's more of a women's wear brand kind of thing but i'm excited to check it out maybe i'll get something for lauren here maybe not we'll see but uh yeah the vibes are on 10 right now in denver it is a beautiful day hopefully it stays that way Before I forget, let's do a little bit of an outfit breakdown and show y'all what I have on today. Put this camera down. On feet, we have the Bodega Hoka Tour Ultra Lows. I just picked these up recently and they fit immaculately. The comfort on them is super, super nice. The pants that I'm wearing are the Collegium Pillar Pants, which are a nylon pant in black. They feel awesome as well, especially for this weather. It's like sunny outside, but like a little bit breezy, but like not too hot, not too cold. It's perfect. The fleece that I'm wearing is a Simply Complicated. I'm not sure the actual name on this fleece, but I know it's from a brand Simply Complicated. It's a Japanese brand. And then the tote bag that I'm wearing is from Story MFG. If you know, you know I'm a Story MFG crossbody tote bag fiend. Hat is by Bailey Goldberg, and that completes the outfit. I love this outfit. It is exactly 50 degrees. I don't know if you will be able to see it. So essentially, Recital has two stores now. One that's more of like plant focused and skincare focused, and then the women's wear store is, is over there. So we're gonna check out both. I'm getting kind of hungry. Probably, probably can't even see me. I'm getting kind of hungry, so probably gonna get some food here pretty quick, but then I'll be back out in these streets, so don't worry. to refuel before we went back out i wanted to show lauren really quickly these shoes before she heads out to another part of denver ones i was kind of looking at before i decided that i was way too hungry to do this so let's check out recital one more time and then we have a couple more stops that we're gonna a couple more stops a couple more shops that we're gonna visit <laughs> So we're inside recital right now and I'm trying to see whether or not these It's perfect for my narrow feet. <laughs> Tiny yeah. feet. These are Martiniano Lopez Corzette's glove shoe. And when I saw that Recital carried these in store, I knew I had to get Lauren to try them on. They are a really dainty yet casually elegant summer slip-on shoe. These are the sort of designers that you can expect at Recital, which I think is awesome for the city of Denver. While we didn't end up buying the glove shoes, something tells me that they will end up in our possession in one way or another down the line. Recital is an awesome spot to take your girl, your girlfriends, and even for men wear inspo it's important to sometimes look at women's wear styling let's head over to our next stop i was this close to actually picking up those glove slip-on loafers by martiniano but i think lauren was a bit hesitant on it and rightfully so obviously you want something that you're gonna get to be the right size and feel good so but i was not planning on getting anything either so it's kind of cool to be able to walk into a place like recital and there's options and brands and footwear those were so beautiful so so beautiful we're gonna go to arcteryx next shout out to, the, to bailey goldberg for the beanie should be fun
So as I was shopping around, all the employees at this Arcteryx kept giving me this particular look. And it was the look of familiarity, I guess, because one of them spoke up and straight up asked me, are you Drew Joyner? <laughs> to which I replied, yes, they, they liked my beanie and recognized it was made by Bailey Goldberg, which was really cool to see as well. And it was awesome to get a bit of hometown recognition in the city of Denver. This location is brand new and was so polished and shiny. Mario, one of the leads at the store, ended up showing me this really cool mural on the outside of the shop dedicated to Arcteryx done by a local artist. I love when bigger companies like Arcteryx collaborate with local artists like this. So that was Arcteryx. So kind. Literally all of them in there were so kind to me. Apparently they are a bit familiar with my content as well, which is kind of special for me. Like they knew about little old me. They didn't know I was born and raised in Denver though. So I, maybe I need to make that more apparent to people. But we're going across the street. We're gonna go to a spot called Green Spaces for the last spot of the day and um, show you kind of the last pocket, the last storefront, the last workspace area that Denver has to offer. By the time I arrived at Green Spaces, majority of the vendors had left, but this space was the motivating force for me to create this video. The leader behind Green Spaces is none other than Javon Taylor, one of the dopest people in the city of Denver. I had him on my podcast, actually. Green Spaces is a collective work and vendor space that will host events and host shops that otherwise couldn't afford renting an actual storefront location in this part of town. Of those who were here, I did end up doing a bit of chit-chatting with. From Dalton and his streetwear brand Law to this cologne and essential oils brand Amelia and Theo. I then ran into one of the homies, Divine. She has been a huge support to my journey, tallying all the way back to 2020. And to see her playing such a huge role in green spaces is amazing. If you're in Denver, give this spot a look. They have amazing small business owners trying to make ends meet. I ended up staying for a while, talking and hanging out with some of the folks who are creatives in the city. I'll see you later. Yes, sir. Always good to see you. Always. Always. Dalton. Nice talking with you. Good to talk to yeah. you. Tell, tell Divine I said uh, goodbye, hello. Okay. Whatever. She is. Yeah, I think I just saw her walk over there. Okay. So that was Green Spaces. I spent so much time there. I was not expecting to spend that much time there at all. But uh, it's good. It's good because, I don't know, the vibes are just right there. Good people. Like, man, it just goes to show that, like I said, Denver has so many bright spots when it comes to just creative energy in the city. And Green Spaces is one of those things that's the newest addition to the Denver area that like, it's a, it's a good spot for sure, so. Alright, we're back a week later. We have all of the denim from the previous week that we sent to the tailor. It's now done. I want to show you guys the things that I added to the denim and what I changed. Got a couple of other things that I want to show you guys from the pickups of our Exploring Denver's fashion scene. Should be a lot of fun. Let's start with the denim. It's about to get serious here. Let me clip this mic onto my chest here. Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Hopefully you can, I believe you can, we're good. Here, I am so excited. I know that this turned out exactly the way I wanted it to and the denim that I decided to get tailored was all of the essentially Japanese silvers denim that I picked up, some of the pairs that I've had before. Let's pull them out. These are the Naked and Famouses. Sorry, the lighting is changing. It's like a cloudy day. My golden pair, these are the Yoji Yamamoto's right here. Sugarcane, Hawaii and then sugarcane, 
Okinawa. So there were two main adjustments that I made to each pair of denim except for the Yojis which I have already made that adjustment before. The first adjustment was for most of the pairs what I decided to do is I decided to cinch in the waist a little bit maybe I had lost more weight than I had thought. I actually am down a good amount of weight so uh, I wanted those to fit just a bit better around my waist and from the Okinawas to the Hawaii's and the Naked and Famouses, I brought the waist in on all of them. I know a lot of people might say, well Drew, like you don't want to do that with your salvage denim or, or Japanese denim, like it's going to shrink when you put it in the wash. If I'm not mistaken, either these already have been pre-washed or pre-shrunk or the way I'm going to combat that is the way I wash them, which I'll get into in another video. but. I brought the waist in on all these and I think they fit even that much better and it's something that I feel like if if you haven't taken your pants to the tailor and their waist or their inseam is too long or it's too big, please do that because I think for a lot of people they're afraid to take their jeans to the tailor. In reality, what you get for actually tailoring your jeans is a better fitting pair of pants, something that you look forward to wearing as opposed to dreading wearing because it doesn't fit you properly. The second adjustment that I made to each pair of pants is that all of them have five belt loops. And while most jeans have five belt loops, most pants have five belt loops. For me, I thought it would be important, or not important, but for me, I find that when I wear my jeans, there's a section of the waistline that sinks down ever so slightly when I'm wearing them. And it's because, in my opinion, I think it's because the fact that there isn't a belt loop there to help hold that fabric up to make it stay cinched onto your body, if, the, if that makes sense. So for all of these, we added two additional belt loops to each pair of jeans. And I think this is gonna be an amazing addition for each jean. It's just gonna hold it up that much better. Like if I were to ever make denim or anything like that, I would make sure that there are ample opportunities to hold your pants up because I don't know, it's just annoying when you're wearing a pair of pants and like you check your backside and you see the fact that, okay, it's sliding down only only on a section of the of the pants where there isn't a belt loop. So that's what we tried to solve here. Did that so every single one of the pair of jeans added that belt loop. They did a fantastic job of trying to match that indigo. They did a fantastic job of matching the color of the actual fabric to the color that they created the belt loops on. 10 out of 10 job and I am so excited to be wearing every single one of these pairs. Like this is like this is a this is a weight at this point. This is so freaking heavy and I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's get a word in for today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you interested in making your very own website for a brand or creative project? Squarespace offers a comprehensive amount of features to make the website that you've always dreamed of. If you want to sell your products direct to consumer or if you just want to display your body of work, Squarespace makes it easy to do that and more. Currently, I'm using my Squarespace website as a hub for all of my content and all of my social media platforms. And if you needed a sign to help nudge you into creating your first website, this is your sign. Visit squarespace.com slash Drew Joyner for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, next we have a couple of just kind of ancillary things that came in in the meantime. Like these are things that came in in between me filming the first part of the video and me filming the second part of the video. This is actually a new camera lens. I've been debating for a long time. I've been going back and forth debating whether or not, okay, do I wanna buy a new camera or should I just use the camera that I have and, and upgrade the lens? Which if you don't know, lenses for cameras, they cost a lot, a lot of money. And um, no matter what like you're doing, it's gonna be an investment. If you buy a new camera, it's gonna be a new investment. If you buy a new lens, it's gonna be a new investment. And I thought to myself, well, I feel like I love the camera I'm using now, the Canon M50. Let's try to upgrade the lens for more of like the vlogging style of what I'm doing, what I've been doing recently. And I picked up the Canon 11 to 22 millimeter lens. And this is it right here, 11 to 22 EF. These lenses are a bit cheaper than like the full frame lenses because the, the camera, the camera is a crop sensor. Should I give you guys a little lens test to show you the difference between the lens I currently have on and what you're seeing in terms of like range of view? Like this is a, this current scope and I'll give you guys a little bit of a view of what it looks like with the new lens on. All right, we're all the way zoomed in right now. Let's see how wide this lens can get. Okay, yeah, that's way wider. Okay, yeah. So you see how much more you can see or view within the, the picture 
than the video. That's kind of crazy. You can see much more of the shelf over there. You can see this wall a bit more and the door, like closet. You can just see more stuff. Like I just look further away from the camera, even though I'm in the exact same spot. So this is gonna be fun to be filming with. I don't know if I want it all the way out when I'm shooting like talking head videos. I think I still want it like right there. Um, but this is a new kind of fun elevation for the content. I know I'm still using this microphone and the microphone I have on, but video improvements are, are great, especially when like I've been using the, the lens I've been using for so many uh, videos. I've filmed so many videos with this lens and now I'm gonna start using this 11 to 22. This one's a 15 to 45, so it, it gets closer. This one gets closer, but for vlogging and whatnot, I can't wait to try out that 11 to 22. Probably the most exciting pickup from Arc'teryx is the Alpha SV jacket that I picked up, which this thing is absolutely beautiful, man. Like with all the hype that Arc'teryx gets, I think it's justified with just the level of product that they put out. And obviously this isn't for, this isn't just designed for the fashion person or the fashion MF. This is designed for having a shell jacket when it's raining, when you're hiking or when you're doing outdoor activities. This thing is absolutely beautiful. So I have the Alpha Beta, or no, I have the I have the Beta LT jacket, which is a shell jacket, and this is the Alpha SV, if I'm not mistaken. I'll, I'll double check that and put it on the screen. But you got the front pockets, the hood cinches in, waist cinches in, construction is beautiful, Gore-Tex, you know, no water is coming through at all. And I love this color. Like this color is such a fun, great color for the spring. I feel like I'm gonna be wearing it like on rainy spring days and it's light enough to wear on those days. That's why I picked it up. It's gonna be a great, great spring. Shout out, shout out to the Arc'teryx fam in Colorado, man. I, I, Arc'teryx products, I've been using them so much. If you watched my New York vlog, I might be moving to New York. I was literally in Arc'teryx the entire time because it was cold and it was rainy. And I wasn't, I wasn't wet and I was warm. You, you feel me? Like, you feel me? <laughs> the last thing I wanted to show you guys is actually a pickup that doesn't really have anything to do with Denver's fashion scene, but I feel like you guys would be curious to see this. We got a chance to get an early look at Owen Hyatt's Somar. We got a chance to look at their grunt boot. So this is the grunt boot. Let me use the wide angle lens to get the entire thing in the shot. Okay, almost. <laughs> but this is the grunt boot by Somar. This is their newest boot that they are coming out with Essentially, I think by the time this video goes live, it'll be out already. It might be sold out. But I had a chance to talk with Owen about what inspired this particular boot. And it's a combat, it's inspired by a combat boot that he picked up a while back. He wanted to rework that combat boot and make it the perfect combat boot. Hence the grunt boot is what he came up with. So this is like an ultra chunky combat boot. Like this thing is thicker than a snicker. I love the fact that it has like this exposed detailing on the front of the boots. That's kind of fun. It's just a really unique pair of boots. The leather quality is insanely nice. The tongue detail is that of a tongue that he described it as he hates. He hates when tongues fall to one side or the other. So like this tongue is like a infinity tongue is what I'm calling it. Cause I don't know what else to call it where it's not going to fall left or right. It's going to stay right on. So anyways, wanted to show you guys this. I thought you guys would think this is cool. S support your friends, support your homies. Like Owen is a great dude. He's a big supporter of this channel. And uh, I can't wait to, to rock these boots all spring, all summer, all winter. So yeah. As always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2023. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you for me. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. Abianto. Peace. <laughs> Yo, what is good post vid vid? Hopefully you guys had a good day today. I had a good day today. It's been a good week. It's been a good week. I'm busy. I'm a bit tired right now filming this video to be honest with y'all, but Thank you guys so much for staying to the end of the video. I'm not gonna forget the fist bumps. Fist bumps look different, bop, on the wide angle lens. They look different, bop. Thank you, thank you guys so, so much for staying to the end. The post vid vid question of the day. Lauren and I, we were arguing about this again. Not arguing, but we were having a conversation about this again. What is better, what is the better breakfast food? Waffles or pancakes? Let me know down in the comments, hashtag PVV. I give pancakes the slight edge, that's my opinion. I think pancakes, you can find a better pancake faster than you can find a better waffle, in Colorado at least. So I'm giving pancakes the edge. 
See y'all later, man. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.